In this lesson, we're going to go over CSV uploads. CSV uploads are a great way to bring a lot of data into NetSuite without a lot of work. All you need is an Excel sheet, and then you can import a ton of information onto the record. In this example, I'm going to show you how to do a customer record upload. Let's say that you just got NetSuite, and now you have to bring in all your customer information into NetSuite. You can go to Setup, Import Export, and then Import CSV Records. And this is where we're going to be starting the process for doing the CSV upload. But first, let's get a little bit more of an understanding of what type of information we want to set up on our Excel file. I'm going to go over to Lists, Relationships, and Customers. You can see here that here is the list of all my customers. A lot of them are just test customers. And I'm just going to go in and view one of them. And here is the customer record. And you can see that there's a whole lot of information on here. You got other types of relationships, communication, maybe their address of that customer, if it's a default shipping and billing address. Now I'm going to click Edit and get a better idea of what each of the fields are. You'll notice that there's some red stars indicating that it's a required field. So you'll need to make sure that you at least pull that information into. You can also see that there's a drop down, and that just means you might have to have that information in a different record already before the upload. The sales rep and Cindy Wang is an employee, right? So we got to make sure that that employee record already exists. And let me show you. So if I go to lists, employees, and you can see that this is just a sample one. For that particular field, you would know that you need to have that information located somewhere else before just typing in Cindy Wang. There are also different types of fields like Boolean values, like this one right here, which normally would just be a checkbox, but you know that that is actually a true false, not just a yes, no. So you might have to set it up like that in your Excel sheet prior to the upload as well. Now let's dive into creating the Excel sheet. I'm going to go over to one that I already created just to save some time. And I actually noted that this one is going to fail and I'll show you why in a second. First of all, I added a bunch of different columns like first name, last name, job title, whether it's a company or an individual, the company name, uh, sales rep, the email, customer record, the email, the customer address, and all the different fields within the customer address that you may need. Let's go back and reference that real quick. But how do you know what fields exactly create this full address? So I'm going to click Edit. And you can see that I have address 1, city, zip, that there's a state in here, country as well. And you can also see over here that individual and company, that type ID, that is person that I have in that column. And when taking a look back at our Excel sheet, you can see that that is person I have as individual or company name. I already know that this is going to fail right now, but I'm going to just upload it like this because I really like to show you examples of something failing so you can figure out how to troubleshoot it. If you've never created a CSV file yet, all you have to do is go to File and just hit this drop down and select that CSV. And then you would just click Save. I already have this, so I'm going to replace the existing file. And now I'm going to go into NetSuite. Here are the different fields that you have to have selected. The record type would be the customer record in this case. But if you notice when I search this and just do CUST, that there is no customer listed here. And that's because I need to get the import type correct. And what I mean by that is I can go to import type and you can see that there's an employees or relationships, items, there's transactions, which might have like your sales order located underneath of it. But how do you know where the customer record is located? If I go under transactions, you can see that there's customers right here, but we're really just looking at the customer record, not really looking at the transactions. So we need to go into the lists and relationships, and you can see that that's where the customer record is actually located. Here for the import type, we would type in relationships, and now we can have this drop down and see customers only. At this point, I'm going to select just a single file to upload, and I'm going to just select the failure one first so you can see what it's like for when the upload fails. And click Next here at the bottom. You can do different things like Add, Update, or Add or Update. Adding just adds more lines. Updating will update existing data. And then Add or Update, it just decides what's most appropriate based on the data you have already in there. And we're going to go to Next. And here's where we start mapping the fields. You can see that it already pre-populated some that it just recognized, like job title on my Excel sheet over here. It could tell that it was probably located on the customer record job title. These are all the fields on the customer record that can be mapped into your CSV upload for this particular one. For example, alternate email is located on the customer record, and you can see it right here. 
let's go back over to this and make sure that we've got everything mapped correctly. This check mark means that it's already over in this list. So you can see we've got a couple more things to add. So I'm gonna add sales rep and just click and drag it over and look for sales rep over here and map it to there. At this point, we're gonna to wanna to add the addresses. So I'm gonna go down here, click the plus button for address. And now we have address one. And if you wanted to add multiple addresses to that customer record, you could keep on adding them like that and they would add different fields for you. For now, we just have one that we're uploading and we've got address one over here. It's gonna prompt me if there's some ones that are required. And for this case, there is a country is required. That's okay, we've already got that. Now let's go back and review our Excel file real quick. You notice that in the billing, shipping billing or not, in this last one, I have it as T for true. And you'll also notice that I've got individual in this in person. And when I click next on this file, we probably will get an error. Look at that. Now it tells me what I need to fix. So it says checkbox Boolean data must be either true or false for individual. So instead of individual on my customer record right here, this is technically a true or false button, but it's just labeled a little bit differently. So it's a little harder to tell. So let's go back into our Excel file and make sure that this part right here is T or F. And I actually already did that. So let's go ahead and go into this file. You'll see that I now put that to true for individual and all the rest is in here. And we'll just go ahead and upload that file now. And we're just going to click back and this will save us some time on having to map those fields again. And I'll just click select and I'm going to click my success one just because I know that it will work already. Let's go to next and adding is just fine. And you'll notice that we still have all these fields already mapped because we just clicked back instead of canceling it all over. I'm going to click next again and now I can assign it different names. So I'm going to say test customer CSV and then add an ID. As always, we usually like to put in an underscore first and then I'm going to click save and run. And when it's all done, you'll get an email saying that it's completed. So if you have a lot of information, like thousands and thousands of lines, it may take a few minutes, sometimes upwards to a couple hours, depending on how many thousands of lines you have to import but I'm gonna check the import job status to see how far it's come along. And you can see that actually it's already done now for me. This eight of eight records were imported successfully. And you'll notice before I had some failures that even though it said the project was complete and the status was complete, they actually didn't bring in all of the records. So you just gotta double check that. And you can see why it didn't for me if I look at this Excel file. And you'll see that the reason why was because I didn't have some information. In this case, I had name combined, Ben Schmitz or Caleb Schmitz. I had the full name combined and they wanted me to split it out. So I had to add a separate column, which I did end up doing right here. Now that that is complete, let's go ahead and look at the customer record to see the new information that pulled in. And you can see now that there's a total of 60 and I just noticed that there was a lot, I think it was 42 beforehand or, or about that. And you can see that these are some of the new ones that just pulled in. And let me just look at one of them, at the address that pulled in. And you notice that the default shipping is also checked, even though it wasn't in the Excel file. And that's just a native process. And sometimes you'll notice stuff like that, that you may have to define further if you want it to behave in a different way. You can also see that the address, if I click edit, the information came in right here. And let me look at this edit and look at the information in a little more detail. The state didn't actually come in, so maybe I'll have to troubleshoot that a little bit, but it looks like, ah, so it probably is the case that it wants a WI instead of it spelled out. And that's pretty much it. You are now at the point where we successfully uploaded our CSV file and also looked at some troubleshooting measures to help you understand what to do when the upload doesn't go as planned.